Hello and welcome back to another episode of Your Drone Questions Answered. I'm John Dicko with the Drone Launch Academy here to find the answers to your drone questions. These are questions that you as the audience submit. And today's question is a pretty good one. It's a pretty timely one, actually. It's what are some upcoming changes to operating a drone beyond the visual line of sight? And this is mainly from a commercial point of view. So we're talking about doing work like inspections or drone deliveries, anything like that being done in a commercial capacity. So here to help answer this question is David Young, founder of Drone Launch Academy. Thanks for being back here again, David. What's up, John? Good to be back. And yeah. Good question. What's happened recently? So five days ago, at least from when we recorded this, it's May 21st right now. On May, I think it was 16th, officially the president signed into law the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2024. And typically no one would ever really care about that. It's just some standard process, mumbo jumbo. But it is significant for a few reasons because buried deep within it is information about drone operations. Obviously, this was everything related to aviation in the United States, but there's a specific call out to this operating your drone further than you can see it beyond visual line of sight, BV loss, um, people call it much different stuff, but it opens up that and it sets some hard date finally for when this stuff has to be approved. If anybody's listening and they just want the straight up answer, there should be a final new rule for operating your drones further than you can see them by, I think we said it was September, 2025. So by that point, the law says the FAA has to have the final rule in place that says Here's what you need to do to fly your drone further than you can see it without having to go through these like special exemption processes. Cause like right now, if you want to fly your drone farther than you can see it, you have to like submit this proposal to the FAA and have all of this paperwork and documentation and safety mitigations. And they review everything on a case by case basis. It is not like a super user friendly process, especially for just like your regular everyday operator. This is finally opening up like a specific way that you can do this. If anybody wants to nerd out on all like the actual documentation, we'll link it all up. The FAA Reauthorization Act, we'll link that. But if you want to know the exact section in the FAA Reauthorization Act 2024, it is section 44811. So 44811, beyond visual line of sight operations for unmanned aircraft. So there's a couple stages to this. It says no later than four months after the date of whenever this is enacted, December 2024, they have to do something called a uh, a notice of proposed rulemaking. And that's like a standard government way of like, hey, we're going to update the regulations for the federal register. So basically whenever FAA is going to make some new rules, they have to go through a specific rulemaking process. And it's laid out how new rules in the United States are made. They will inform us, issue the NPRM notice of proposed rulemaking. And they'll say, all right, public, here's what we're proposing as the, what the rules should be. Or we're going to make a new rule on this thing beyond visual line of sight operations. Here are all the things we're going to consider. We're opening it up to public comment. And so for a certain period of time, literally, John Dicko could go on the FAA's website or the, you know, a federal government website and submit your opinions on, hey, guys, I think it should be this. If you want to say, hey, I think there should be no, you know, you should be able to fly any drone you want as far as you could see it. And here's why. You could write that in and they would have to review that, right? So they're going to review all these comments that come in over a period of time. After that sort of open opinion time closes, they go back, they review everything, and then they put together sort of their proposed final rule, and then that will get issued. And that's when it says, hey, that has to be issued by September 2025. So after they, and they have committees and all this stuff, but um, at least sets in motion the, this is exactly what happened with the Part 107 stuff back in 2016, was they did a notice of proposed rulemaking. This is what happened with remote ID. So they said, hey, here's the rules we think we're going to do. They got public comment, opinion on it. And then they actually issued that rule with that, all the regulations of the law, which created Part 107 exam, which made remote ID a requirement. Now there will be this beyond visual line of sight rule. If you're Googling around, it's proposed so the part of the laws that govern drone operations, commercial drone operations is Part 107. But they're proposing the next part of the code called Part 108. That would talk all about, hey, here's all the requirements you need to fly your drone further than you can see. And there's a lot of stuff in there that they're going to consider about the types of drones, which sizes and speed and all the constraints that you might have to operate under and how manufacturers can certify their own drones to meet the criteria. And there's a lot of things to consider on that end of things, just the hardware side of it. But for those listening, probably more on the drone pilot side, there's a specific part you dive into the FAA Reauthorization Act, scroll down a little bit. There's a certain part that says part of what they have to do is they have to establish remote pilot certification standard for remote pilot or beyond visual line of sight operations, taking into account varying levels of automated control and management of unmanned aircraft system flight. So there's that, which means like, oh, hey, there's going to be a new sort of certification process for people that want to get this beyond visual line of sight. And right now, one of the ratings on the 
remote pilot certificate is the small UAS rating, not the standard one that everybody gets. But people I've heard think you're going to be in another rating that says like, hey, a beyond visual line of sight rating, something you could add to your certificate. Uh, let me dive a little bit deeper for you. I'll link this up too. There was something called the um, an aviation rule lit making committee. So our final report, aviation rulemaking committee, basically a bunch of people that got together and said, hey, if we were going to do something for beyond visual line of sight, here's what it would look like. And this report is dated March 10th, 2022. So over two years old, which is a 381 page document. It gives, it like lays out like, Hey, if we were going to do this, here's what it would look like. And so you can see what kind of the current proposal would be. It is massive. So in this document, if you go down to page 163, you can see what they lay out the certification, some of the certification for these remote pilots. And if you look at the proposed part 108.63, it says the issuance of a remote pilot certificate with a BVLOS rating. So that'll be something that you add to your certificate. There will probably be some type of training you have to do, some type of knowledge proficiency you have to show, whether that's like an online thing like they do with the recurrent uh, training for current remote pilots, or if it's like a new thing you have to do at a testing center, it doesn't necessarily say it in here. Mm -hmm. That's what's proposed. It's that proposed part 108 addition to your certificate. And we know that according to the rule that just got passed, that all that process has to be laid out by September, 2025. You can go ahead and gear up for that and think when this happens, it's going to open up a lot of options for companies that are looking to use drone beyond visual line of sight. Sometimes people think about drones. They think, oh, you can do all these things right now. Pretty constrained. You can't do drone delivery mm -hmm. unless literally how they're doing it now is they're getting in these little like towers where they can sit up really high and they can see the drone, but they're limited to like, they're like a one or two mile radius because you have to be able to see it. So that's a bummer. Like pipeline inspections. If you have a 200 miles of pipeline, you can't just fly that with a drone right now all the way down unless you have all these special exemptions, you know, security monitoring. Like if you want to just go have a drone, like you say you own a nuclear power plant, you want a drone to circle your property or fly all the way around the perimeter, right? If you got a big area or if you're inside or whatever, you can't do that right now because it's prohibited by the rules. So having this extra certification or a pass to allow people to fly beyond visual line of sight further than you can see it or where you can't see the drone. It's opened up tons and tons of use cases from inspections to drone delivery to search and rescue stuff, like so many different things. When people think about drones doing cool stuff, this is like a major roadblock right now towards that. So it's nice that there's an end date to be able to see that open up. No, I mean, that's incredibly exciting. These aren't official rules yet at this point, but you kind of providing a little bit of a preview of what we could expect. What drone pilots could do, at least now, is you mentioned actually provide feedback to the FAA. Yeah. yeah. So in the next four months, so by September, they should have that up where you can start giving feedback and what we can do, we'll do, I'm sure we'll do other episodes where we kind of update, hey, what did it look like at that point? But mm -hmm. people I'm sure will be interested in hearing about this now because it's something that people have wanted for a long time. So it's nice that it's happening. It's very exciting. Hey, David, I appreciate you coming on here, sharing this news, this timely news. Hey, if you got a question, anything about drones at all, please submit it. We'll find the answer to it. You can hop onto ydqa.io, type in your question there, we'll answer it. Or if you're part of the Drone Launch Connect community, please ask questions. We will find the answers to it. It's a great community, a lot of smart people, a lot of advice being shared around. And if you're not part of it, it's simple to join. Go ahead, just hop on Drone Launch Academy. Dot com. There's a little tab up at the top, Drone Launch Connect. Click it and you can register. Really cool community. A lot of use out of this for drone pilots. Until then, we'll see you in the sky.